Between the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max, the latter seems like a bigger deal because of its enormous 6.9 inch screen, but I am telling you the iPhone 16 Pro should not be overlooked. I have been using both of these new iPhone Pros side by side and I think the regular iPhone 16 Pro is a better value for $999 US dollar. You get a bigger display than last year, the most powerful 5x zoom that used to be a Pro Max exclusive and an impressive battery life boost based on our testing. Otherwise, the iPhone 16 Pro has all the same goodies as the Pro Max including the powerful A18 Pro chip upgraded 48MP ultra-wide camera and impressive video features like 4K 120fps slow-mo videos and audio mix for zapping background noise. Apple intelligence features like writing tools and the new Siri are promising based on early testing of the iOS 18.1 developer beta but that won't officially arrive until October. As you will see in my iPhone 16 Pro review, this is ounce for ounce one of the best phones you can buy and the best iPhone for power users on a budget, even if there's not a truly wow feature yet for Apple intelligence yet. The iPhone 16 Pro goes on sale September 20 and starts at $999 US dollar for 128GB of storage. It's worth noting that the iPhone 16 Pro Max features 256GB of capacity in its base model. The good news is that you can get 256GB of storage for $100 less than the iPhone 16 Pro Max and you get the same max storage option of 1TB for those willing to really large. The iPhone 16 Pro is still a compact phone but there is a trade-off with getting a larger display. It's now more of a mid-size phone now as opposed to a small phone as the size and weight have grown. This handset measures 5.89 by 2.81 by 0.32 inches and weighs 7.03 ounces compared to 5.77 by 2.78 by 0.32 inches and 6.6 .6 ounces for the iPhone 15 Pro. So the new iPhone is taller and wider and just as thin but there's some more heft to it. The good news is that the iPhone 16 Pro is still easy to use with one hand as Apple made the bezels thinner. The design should be more durable too as Apple claims that the ceramic shield display is 50% tougher. Plus the band is still made of titanium which is more durable than aluminium. The iPhone 16 Pro colors aren't very flashy compared to the regular iPhone 16. There's white titanium, black titanium, natural titanium and the new desert titanium which is like a soft rose gold. I prefer the desert hue because it looks new. Don't expect much new from the iPhone 16 display, the only real news beyond the size increase to 6.3 inches for this OLED screen is that it can get dimmer. The minimum is now just one nit. I put the two phones side by side in a dark room and I noticed the difference immediately. What's the benefit? You can use your phone in bed without disturbing your partner and if you are using standby mode, the iPhone 16 Pro won't be as bright when you are using it overnight as an alarm clock. Otherwise, you get the same 120Hz refresh rate on this Pro motion display and the same max brightness. Apple claims a peak brightness of 2000 nits outdoors and 1600 nits for HDR content. We simulate outdoor conditions with a flashlight and the iPhone 16 Pro reached 1553 nits, that's higher than the Galaxy S24 Ultra but way behind the Google Pixel 9 Pro. Apple has added a new button to the iPhone 16 Pro but it's not a technically a button. The camera control is a recessed capacitive switch that provides haptic feedback. Press once to launch right into the camera and press again to snap a photo. It's simple and works well in landscape and portrait mode. I found it easy to launch straight into the camera and I like that you can press and hold the camera control to record a video. Though, if you take your finger off the button, the video stops. I wish you could customize that. The camera control has a lot of tricks including the ability to zoom in and out by sliding your finger left and right on the button and a soft double press launches a mini menu. You can scroll through you to tweak things like exposure, depth and choose photographic styles. 
there's a learning curve to camera control but i'm glad that it's an option plus this frees up the action button on the left side of the iphone 16 pro for programming other shortcuts the iphone 16 pro has a few key upgrades that i appreciated during my testing there's a sharper 48 megapixel ultra wide camera a faster 48 megapixel main fusion camera with zero shutter lag and the 5x tetra prism zoom borrowed from the pro max series in addition photographic styles are integrated directly into the camera and photos app so you can change skin undertones and the mood effect of your photo on the fly plus you can tweak it after the fact to test the iphone 16 pro's faster performance i had my son take a photo of me shooting a jump shot side by side with the iphone 15 pro and the result is brighter and more detailed image how does the iPhone 16 Pro compare to the best camera phones? I shot a number of pictures using the iPhone 16 Pro alongside the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL to find out. I put the ultra wide camera to the test on the iPhone 16 Pro with this shot of a beach and Apple comes out on top. The colors are more natural through the iPhone versus the Galaxy S24 Ultra and Samsung's peak looks distorted on the right side by the flowers. Here are some camera samples of iPhone 16 Pro. Hey Siri, are you smart yet? Apple intelligence isn't officially coming to the iPhone 16 series until October but I was able to try out some of this feature ahead of its official launch as part of the iOS 18.1 developer preview. Writing tools can be fairly helpful. I used it to summarize a long note in the Apple Notes app and it came up with a useful summary. I also had fun with writing tools trying to rewrite an email I purposely wrote in a root tone choosing the professional option and the result was indeed close to what I would usually send. I also used Apple Intelligence to look up how to do various things on the iPhone and get back step-by-step -step instruction for how to screen record on your iPhone so you'll definitely spend less time looking up how to add online. On the photos front, my favorite Apple Intelligence feature is Memory Movie. You can give the Photos app a prompt like a beach memories through the years with an upbeat soundtrack and you will see the AI go to work sifting through all your photos and videos and the end result was pretty satisfying, fittingly ending with a sunset peak. While it's overdue, I appreciate that the iPhone 16 Pro has a clean up button which is basically Google's magic eraser on iOS. Apple's version of this feature is smart enough to identify objects or subjects you might want to remove and it works quickly. But the feature struggled in some cases to completely erase what I didn't want in the frame. Siri is definitely the biggest upgrade with Apple Intelligence. It's a lot more conversational and forgiving of mistakes as we speak. For example, I was able to correct a timer from 10 minutes to 5 minutes on the fly and Siri got it right. The new Siri in Apple Intelligence is also better with follow-up questions. For example, I could ask about the weather today and then say how about the rest of the week and I got an extended forecast. Siri was also smart enough to answer who do the Yankees play next and what are the odds in succession to it couldn't tell me who the starting pitcher was, I got safari links instead. Another plus is that you can talk to Siri just by typing, you tap the bottom of the iPhone 16 Pro to enter your query which comes in handy when you can't talk. Siri is definitely getting better but it doesn't have that wow factor that you will experience with Jimmy Live Voice or GPT-40 Voice where it feels like you are having a real conversation with a chatbot. 
The iPhone 16 Pro packs Apple's new A18 Pro chip built on second generation 3 nanometer tech as well as 8GB of RAM based on our testing. It is indeed the first chip around but not on every test. When I played Resident Evil Village, I was scared as I made my way down a snowy path and stumbled upon some dead birds. The graphics are console grade. I also got to play the Infinity Nikki game which was in beta and the lighting and water effects were very impressive. On Geekbench, which measures overall performance, the iPhone 16 Pro is 50% faster than the Galaxy S24 Ultra's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip on single core and 15% higher on multi-core performance. The Pixel 9 Pro series is well behind. To test video editing performance, we use Adobe Premiere Rush and time how long it takes to transcode a 4K clip to 1080p. The new iPhone 16 Pro needed just 21 seconds, which is twice as fast as the S24 Ultra. On the graphics front, the iPhone 16 Pro features a 6-core GPU compared to 5 cores for the regular iPhone 16 models. Apple says you should get 20% faster performance than the iPhone 15 Pro. On the 3 d Mark SolarBay graphics test, which has support for ray tracing, the iPhone 16 Pro was 22% faster than the iPhone 15 Pro. However, that's still 18% behind the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which also delivered higher frame rates on the test. The iPhone 16 Pro Max features a new internal design with a graphite-clad aluminum substructure that's supposed to result in 20% better sustained performance. To test this claim, we ran the 3 d Mark Wildlife stress test for 20 minutes. The iPhone 16 Pro turned in a stability score of 66%. It hit a higher overall loop score than iPhone 16 Pro Max but had a bigger drop off. The Galaxy S24 Ultra's score was worse at 60.4%. Interestingly, the iPhone 16 Pro Max turned in a stronger stability score of 84%, which is better than the 75% from the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The iPhone 16 Pro gets a bigger battery life boost thanks to a larger battery and other efficiencies. On our benchmark test, which involves continuous wave surfing at 150 nits of screen brightness, the new iPhone 16 Pro lasted 14 hours and 7 minutes, which is a big jump from the 10 hour and 53 minutes from the iPhone 15 Pro and enough to just crack our list of the best phone battery life. The Google Pixel 9 Pro lasted 13 hours 37 minutes, so it was a bit behind. The larger Galaxy S24 Ultra endured for 16 hours 45 minutes. The bad news is that the iPhone 16 Pro has the same 20 watt charging speeds as before, so it wasn't a surprise to see it get to 56% capacity in 30 minutes. The Google Pixel 9 Pro's 45W charger was worse at 49%, but the S24 Ultra reached 71% in the same time. Despite reports that iPhone 16 Pro supports 45W charging, we did not see a difference in our testing. The good news is that MagSafe wireless charging sees a jump from 15W to 25W if you are using a 30W adapter. Overall, the iPhone 16 Pro is arguably the best flagship phone under $1000. You get the same excellent cameras as the iPhone 16 Pro Max for $200 less and I think the screen is big enough at 6.3 inches while being easy to use with one hand. I also like the improved battery life, handy camera control and compelling audio mix feature for videos. The Apple intelligence capabilities such as writing tools, the new Siri and cleanup show promise but some of the more exciting features like chat GPT integration, image playground and the Google Lens like visual intelligence are coming later. In terms of the competition, I think the Galaxy S24 Plus and Google Pixel 9 Pro have more compelling AI features right now, but I prefer the camera system from the iPhone in many cases and the extra performance from its A18 Pro chip. Should you upgrade to the iPhone 16 Pro? If you have an iPhone 13 Pro or older phone, I'd say yes, and if you have an iPhone 14 Pro, Pro, I'd say wait to see how well Apple intelligence works once it fully rolls out before you buy.